because as languages die, so does the pool of knowledge that we can draw upon to solve world dilemmas, such as the crises of climate change. Our distinct languages communicate our world views, particularly our knowledge of our lands and biodiversity. Frameworks for language revitalization do exist. Master apprentice programs have been developed that need to be supported and implemented. These programs are successful even when there are only six fluent speakers left. Contemporary and inexpensive technologies are easily available for recording, transmitting, and translating of languages, and it is imperative in the interest of dying languages and bodies of knowledge that these be made available to our peoples in the interest not only of the protection and promotion of these for our own peoples, but as an integral and precious conservative notions of global heritage. We as Indigenous women know that when a language dies, a culture dies, and within it, tremendous and incalculable body of Indigenous knowledge. In this age of information, it would be tragically ironic to permit that. The regaining of ancestral languages is a formidable task because we can no longer rely on a natural intergenerational transmission. The Permanent Forum has the opportunity to challenge states and Indigenous peoples alike to take concrete action to revitalize Indigenous languages. Yesterday, it was said on a number of occasions where climate change is concerned that we are close to a tipping point, one of no return. Climate change and the endangered state of Indigenous languages are indeed related. In our cyclical view on life, without land and water, there could not be language. The permanent form can be instrumental in bringing this into the global consciousness, such that appropriate action may be taken to reverse the trend toward language extinction and have the prediction that 200 years from now, only 200 languages will be spoken be an unfulfilled prediction. We endorse the findings and recommendations of the expert paper entitled Forms of Education of Indigenous Children as Crimes Against Humanity and the recommendations contained in the Permanent Forum's backgrounder Climate Change and Indigenous Peoples Fact Sheet on Indigenous Languages. We also, the Global Indigenous Women's Caucus, recommend and urge the Permanent Forum to call on states to immediately support Indigenous peoples' language revitalization efforts. This includes supporting the Master Apprentice Programs and Assessment of Language Status and their creation of more links between formal schools and family so that there is a continuous use of language. We strongly recommend to UNESCO and WIPO and UNICEF, among other UN agencies and to states, to urgently make available to us the means to access such protection and technologies that will help us to recover where necessary and to preserve our languages, to develop them in accordance with our needs to communicate in the modern world and to share them with our own future generations and with others who would like to speak to us in our own languages. Also to ensure that the means and support take all the forms of policy provision, legal recognition, integration into normal use and education programs and systems, including the building of capacity for teaching these languages in our traditional way and correctly with affection and respect. This includes initiatives by the universities to promote language revitalization of our peoples. To also recognize and support the central role of mothers and elders in language recovery and revitalization including offer, offering adult immersion programs for those who have lost access to their traditional languages or excluded due to migration or forced relocation. We also urge UNICEF, UNESCO and WIPO to pay careful attention to the use of traditional oral learning, recording and transmission techniques and to integrate them in their recommendation and expert support to governments in country programs enhancing their capacity with substantial support and accessing to modern technologies that enable their survival in the modern world. Proper linguistic mapping of Indigenous languages with respect to Indigenous people's needs 
urgently needs to be systematically done to enable our languages to be supported and thus no threat of extinction. To also recognize Articles 11, 13, 14, 15, and 16 of the UN Declaration that promote our rights to Indigenous languages, cultural traditions and customs, educational systems and media in our own languages. Thank you, Madam Chair, for the opportunity to present the Global Indigenous Women's Caucus. Yeah,